Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also, drop some likes and subscribe if you like the content. And there you go. That's how it is. That's how it is. Alright guys, uh, last video we worked with enemies and spawning enemies. And we have a few things left to do. Today the plan is going to be to actually click on enemies and delete them. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten this spawn timer down because it was a little too 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 big. And we had a few problems with that. It didn't really spawn enemies quick enough. And also I want to remove or comment out the outline section because I don't think it makes the enemies look good. So I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to see if I'm recording. Next step is to remove enemies both at the bottom of the screen and at a mouse click. So there are a few things we did in the last video that are going to help us today. And I want you guys to try to remember that if you kind of forgot what we did in the last one. We had mouse position window, which we were working with. And I said I was going to show you mouse position view in another video. But one thing I forgot to tell you is that any render window already uses a view, but it's just not custom. It's its its own default view. And you can use that to create a mouse position view variable as well. So we have the mouse position window. We're also, we want a mouse position view as well. Now, you don't have to understand why right now, but I'll tell you a little bit because mouse position window is counted in vector 2i, two integers, x and y as integers, <coughs> excuse me. The view mouse position is counted or is, is kept as a float to float variables. And this is very important because most of the operations done in visual or in SFML are done with floats. So we want a mouse plus view, and this is the one you're often going to use. Mouse position window is probably almost never used unless you're working with the UI and stuff. Um, but then you have to cast it to a mouse position or vector 2f, which is annoying to do all the time. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep a mouse position view as well. And I'm going to update that at the same time where I update my other mouse position. Okay. Plus view equals we're going to get this from the last one and then we're going to dot no and then we're going to this mouse sorry about this this window um, map pixel to chords so we're going to take a pixel from the window and map it specifically to coordinates you don't have to really understand what this does but it helps it really does help and and it gives me back wait this mouse plus window why was that so hard for me okay we're taking our mouse position window and we're mapping it in a way so that it becomes floats and it will be mapped to our view now again don't think too much about this don't really care about this too much just know that we need to do this and just copy this code right here and we're gonna need to have this this is gonna work the same as this it's just that this is gonna be in floats because we're not moving our view around in our window keep it like that now we're going to go into our move the enemies and a good thing to think about when you're working with games is that you don't want to have a lot of for loops because you can have a lot of different for loops with different enemies. And if you remove an enemy here, it might bug out later. You want to probably have one for loop for your enemies, one or two maximum. And usually you want them in this format with a auto E, you know, you want them to be using iterators, which is a C++ thing, just makes for loops much faster. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a regular for loop now just for the sole reason that we have to delete our enemies when we click on them. Mm. Enemies dot size, no size. And I'm going to do this in a way that is very basic and not really, not really the best way to do this either. So when you're making your games, 
this is probably not 100% the way that you're going to do it. But it, it is possible to do it this way. But it's not the best way. The best way is to have your own vector class, kind of. And I, I usually make my own when working with games. And in that one, there's an easy, quick way to delete enemies and delete stuff. We just put it at the end. Here, it's probably going to resize. The vector is probably going to resize every time we remove something, which is really heavy if you have a lot of stuff. So you don't want to do that. Uh, but maybe, who knows, maybe vectors has been updated. But I haven't, I haven't really checked that in a while. <laughs> but I think it's, it's pretty heavy. Once you move the enemy, check if clicked upon. And this check, you can do it in two ways. First of all, if we run our game, hopefully, when your mouse is within the bounds of the enemy, we're going to click. So there are two steps to this. When the bounds are within and the click. Now, I want you guys to think game development type thinking okay I want you to develop that what is the most effective way here do we always 24 7 every frame check if a mouse position is within each of the enemies or do we check once the mouse has been clicked and then we'll do the heavy computation so if we do the easy computation all the time and then the heavy one is done only when we click so we're gonna do it that way instead that's smarter way so to do that we're going to make an if statement in here. SF mouse is button pressed. This is the function we use from the mouse class to check if a button has been pressed. And then this isn't that heavy, right? It's probably just going to check if the check for that one trigger. Um, I could be totally wrong and look like an idiot right now, but that's okay. SF mouse left. So if that button is pressed, now we're going to make an internal if statement, which is only going to be run when the mouse button has been clicked. Now we're going to do the heavy computation. Now we're going to always check, or now we're going to check if uh, enemies i dot get global bounds. That is the function to kind of get the bounds around the enemy, right? Because it's a rectangle. So we can get the bounds, get global bounds two parentheses don't forget that dot now there is two functions here as well contains and intersects which one do we use intersect is mostly used with other shapes other shapes with more points four points or something and then you have your own shape it's going to check if they're kind of intersecting with one another contains is made for the sole purpose of checking if a point is within one single point is within an object or a, a, a rectangle or some shape so I'm going to use this, contains, and if you saw, if you had a keen eye, it takes a mouse position as a float, vector 2f. That's why we created the mouse position view, so we don't have to cast anything here. We'll just leave it in, put it in there, we'll be fine. Once that's done, whenever we click and we're within the bounds of the enemy, we're going to delete the enemy. So in here, all we want to do is this, enemies dot erase this enemies dot begin I know this seems complicated but it's a C++ plus plus thing plus I but I'll still explain it it wants to erase something and it wants to get the first part it wants it wants the first uh, position this is an iterator all right so it wants the first position within itself plus how many steps we moved before we found this enemy and then we just delete that enemy hopefully that made sense I don't want to get too deep within C++ because it kind of defeats the purpose of having C++ tutorials. But still, there you go. And these steps should make sure that we can remove enemies whenever we, whenever we click on them. So I'm holding down click right now. It's probably not something you want in your game. Um, but yeah, we're clicking. We're clicking and they're deleting. So you shouldn't get any crashes from this either. Uh, and that's good. So that's step number one to make sure they, they get deleted. Um, now, 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 if this enemies at position I 
dot get position y. So we're checking if the enemy is gone below the end of bottom of the screen, then we're gonna delete the enemy as well. Okay. If the enemy is at is past the bottom of the screen. Ah, just keep it like that. So if the position of the enemy is Y, the top left there, the top part of the enemy is less or is greater than, sorry, this window dot get size dot Y. So basically the bottom of the window, because zero zero is at the top, right? So the size will give me the bottom of the window. If that is less than the position of the enemy in the Y direction, that means the enemy is outside of the window. And once the enemy is outside of the window, then I'm going to delete that enemy. Um, and I'm going to make if delete deleted. I'm going to copy this because one more rule, you want to delete your enemy only once in the loop. You don't want to have a bunch of stuff um, happening to the enemy after it's supposed to be deleted, after it has been deleted. So I'm going to make a little boolean here. All right, so you want to put your bool deleted in here and you will remove the static that I had before and that will make it work because I'm dumb today and I can't really get that to work. But anyway, make sure it looks like this and your enemy should be deleted. Final delete, whatever. And then you should be able to click and delete your enemies without any issues whatsoever. You shouldn't have any crashes, you shouldn't have any problems. And this is not moving the enemies. This is moving and updating enemies. Good, good, good. So that's how it looks for us right now, guys and girls. We have a working enemy removal system. Now all that remains that all that remains to be done is our points being added. So for example, before we end the video. For example, the points will be added whenever we kill the enemy and not when it's deleted. So I'm going to put that in here. Gain points. This points plus equals, I don't know, if you want 10 points per enemy. Here you can check if the enemy's, what the enemy's color is. If the color is specific, you'll get more points. And we can have smaller enemies depending on the color. Stuff like that. Um, and so we're going to increase the points. They won't be printed out for us right now, obviously. But And then you can increase this, like 10 enemies. And let us increase their speed as well, at which they move. Enemy, where is it? So they're moving down, right? So let's put that at 5 or something. Let's run it one last time and just see so everything works. Yeah. Cool. All right, that's going to be a little harder. Okay, that's cool. We like that. Yeah, we, we like that. This is good. Boom, 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 boom. And you can hold your mouse button down. I don't want that. So I'm going to make sure we can remove that function as well. So so holding it down doesn't help. And probably a little Boolean here is going to make sure that works for us. Here we're probably going to be able to use static to solve that problem. But there you go, guys and girls. Hopefully you like that. Hopefully you learned something. Keep working. Keep experimenting. Don't just do what I'm doing. Try to add stuff. Try to do stuff. Change things. Do whatever you want, okay? And uh, that's the whole point of this tutorial. And if you have comments, if you have improvements, suggestions, whatever, just let me know in the comment section. If you just want to give me a shout out, say I'm doing a good job, tell me in the comment section as well. Because you guys are amazing. Every each and one of you is great. Okay? Thank you so much for all the support. Take care, keep working hard, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, alright? Bye-bye.